Jesus is interested in the lost. His business is looking out for somebody who has missed his way in life. So that he will bring that person back home. Hallelujah. Amen. There's nobody who will come to Jesus. And Jesus will sack you because you are too bad. Hallelujah. No matter how far you have gone, you are always welcome to Jesus. Say amen. amen. Say a better amen. amen. Never come to the house of God feeling so bad that you don't belong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'll prove it to you very soon. So he said the son of man came to But he then turns to his disciples and addresses an important issue. Read off. Now, as they heard these things, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable. He spoke another parable because he was, near, he was near Jerusalem. He was getting near to Jerusalem, and because they thought the kingdom of God, that and they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said. Therefore, Jesus said. A certain noble man went into a far country. This parable, eh? Those of you who have read our book, giving God your best, I think. It is featured there. It is an answer to those who say that if Jesus said he was going to come and it's been 2,000 years now, he has not come. Why has he not come? The answer is in that part. Anybody who will tell you that Jesus or Bepan Kawapati that at Wadvimu refer that person to what Jesus himself said. He went to a far country to receive a kingdom. And when he went, others didn't want him to come back. All oh, people were saying all kinds of things behind him. But finally he came back. One of these days, Jesus will show up again. Hallelujah. Amen. But when he comes back, he's not coming to seek and save the lost. But he's coming to judge. Hallelujah. Amen. So right now we are in a time and a season and a dispensation where grace is available for the lost to be saved. And another time is going to come where it is a time of accountability and judgment, rewards and punishment. Say amen. amen. We have to make use, good use of the times in which we are. Because soon it shall come to an end. Hallelujah. Amen. When he was going, he called ten of his servants. Yeah. Read it quickly. Gave them ten, let's say coins, money. He gave them ten. So I said that there were ten servants. Ten. Ten. ten servants, and he had ten coins, or let's say ten Ghana. How many will each one receive? Everybody will receive one Ghana, one Ghana, one Ghana. Hallelujah. He did that and he went. And he told them something. He didn't give them. He gave them that money and gave them an instruction. Yes. And said to them, He said to them, Do business right now. Do business with this money until I return. Do business till I come. The church of Jesus Christ. This morning in Blessed Faith, I want us to know. I wish somebody else can hear me beyond this place. No. That God has given something to us to trade with. To do something with before he comes. There is nobody listening to me. If only you believe in Jesus Christ. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior Jesus. He has put something of value in your hands to use to do business till he comes. Amen. Amen. And I said that even our very life, our life is a gift that God has given to us. We must engage our life productively so that we can make profit, we can add value or we can achieve results in the kingdom of God my life must bring profit to God how will 
of my life bring profit to God. He gave me one life. That one life must multiply into many lives. Say amen. amen. And I said that one of the things Jesus will demand when he comes is how much souls you and I have been able to add to his kingdom. It is clear here, or it clear the Bible, Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus has given an assignment to his church. And as he is in heaven, he is looking at us, how we are responding to that call. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. How are we responding to that? Let me see somebody. If Jesus was to call you and send you on an errand, would you do it or not? Let me see my hand. If you see Jesus face to face, I say, Sister, go to Castle and buy me something. Will you go or not? Jesus, who? If you not go, let me see your hand. I won't go. Or he used to cry, I mean, come. Hallelujah. Amen. The church has been sent. And he will come back to demand account. And the kind of sending we have received is not that we are buying this of the account. He has given us money to do business. And he will come back and ask you, how much have you done? Praise the Lord. Oh, I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many of you don't know that. The God has given us even something which is more valuable than money. And he wants us to invest it. Do business with it. Okay, read on. We don't like this man. Yes. And so it was that when he said, They be an awesome, awesome man. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. And so it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded his servants, to whom he had given the money, to be told to him, that he might know how much every, every man had gained his freedom. So that he will know what everyone has gained by trading. Let me say trading. Who did you have? Hallelujah. Amen. I pray this morning that God will give us understanding into what he wants you to do with what he has given you. Everyone is not supposed to preach like I'm, I mean, uh, to be a pastor like I am. But there's something that God has put in your hands that you must trade with until he comes. Let me quickly go to Galatians chapter 3. The reason why we are failing, listen, the reason why we are failing is that Pastor Wise in our beginning told us, read a prayer that we need order in our lives. Everybody say, order in my life. Some of us, our lives are disorganized. And number two is that many of us don't even know who we are. Who we are and what we have. And so, we don't even place value on our lives. We carry ourselves about as people who need help. And we are looking up to help at every penny and every place. We are going to the wrong places for help when God has put in us the solution we are looking for. Amen. We don't know what we have and we don't even know who we are. So Paul looked at the Galatians and he lamented bitterly 
I want to take you through that scripture. If you are not able to do it in your Bible studies, you will follow me with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Mm. Galatians 3. Oh, you poor. Everybody say poor. Oh, my. The Amplify uses very strong words. That, if you are not careful, is everybody getting my English so I should speak to you tomorrow? Those are both interpretation, I'm happy. Everybody say amen. amen. If you are understanding me so far, say amen. amen. If you need interpretation, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Galatians 3, look into your Bible. Oh, you poor. And he was talking to the church. You know what believers do? Paul was addressing a church. You poor and silly and thoughtless and unreflecting. Thoughtless. Thoughtless. Unreflecting and senseless. Galatians, who has fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell? Everybody say a spell. Do you know that there are something there's there are things something called spell? Or we bet may be a spell. How do you say the P? A bet prayer through spell or cast a spell. He says, Who has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell? Over you, unto whom right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. Paul said, let me ask you one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel? And believe in it. You see, was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? What is Paul saying? Paul, let, let's, let's put it in our context. Because he was addressing probably a more legalistic condition. People who have experienced the power of Christ. People who have come to believe in Jesus. They have accepted the gospel of Christ. And now they are trying to attain perfection or they are trying to pursue Christianity in the energy of the law. Which is not possible. Hallelujah. For some of us, this is what will make sense to us. You became a good Christian. You had a wonderful born again experience. All of a sudden, you are doing something else. You knew the Holy Ghost. You say, are you so foolish and so senseless and so silly? Having begun your new life spiritually. Having begun your new life spiritually. With the Holy Spirit. Are you not reaching perfection by depending on the flesh? Some of us began on fire. We knew the fervency of the Spirit. You knew the Holy Spirit. When He speaks, you hear Him. But now, it looks like things are not the same anymore. We are struggling in the flesh and with the flesh. How did you begin your new spiritual life? With the Holy Spirit. Are you now reaching perfection by depending on the flesh? You have become so fleshly, so carnal, with no desire for the things of the spirit. Are we so foolish? Having tasted of the goodness of God in Hebrews chapter 6, he said it is impossible for those of us who have tasted of the good word of God, of the powers of the age to come, we have seen God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing? Look at the price you have paid. The first things I come to them and prepare why I don't know who my wife is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the sacrifice. Some of us were persecuted when you wanted to serve the Lord. Some of the things that came, but you stood over all those things. Why is it that today you want to compromise after all that you've been through to come this far? Have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing? Are you going to allow it to go waste? To no purpose. If it is really to no purpose or in vain, then I like verse 5. He said, Then does he who supplies you with his Holy Spirit, does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and the person who works powerfully and miraculously among you, does he do it on the grounds of your own doing? Some of us don't believe God anymore. You see that, you see that yeah, all, I mean, each man for himself, God for us all. You see that the brother of Abraham doing the effort that we soon do. Can't answer. Some for you, what can it be? The be a, can 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 be Let me go and fight for myself. Thank you. Continue to fight for yourself. That he will supply you with his marvelous Holy Spirit. And the one who works powerfully and miraculously. Say miraculously. God wants us to walk in the power of his presence. There are things God wants to do for us if we allow God. Say Amen. Amen. You see, sometimes you are not too sure of things happening in your life. But you can just see the trace of the work of God in your life. Sometimes you see that this is disaster. But the time you realize you have overcome it. And it is not your doing. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Amen. There is God who, And God works for his children. Never you think that you can outdo God or we can outsmart God or that with our strength we can achieve anything without God. You will end up in a mess. Have you suffered so many things for nothing? Those days you were so, you had so much faith in God. You will even believe God for ordinary pure water and God will provide. Amen. Sometimes even 20 persons to buy what I don't have. Say God provide. And God provides. Yes. Now you know how to make money. So you don't believe God for anything anymore. That's why you are struggling. I say that's why you are struggling. That's he who supplies you with the spirit and who works miracles among you. Does he do it on the grounds of your own effort? Also, I believe that if God has not helped us as a church to believe in him, we will not be sitting where we are. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes just being like a child before God, just see yourself like I'm a nobody, God is everything, is what gives us advantage. But when we think we are smart, we are strong, we are wise, we know how to manipulate things, that is where we fail. Say amen. Amen. That's where we fail. Yesterday I was going to OEB, I was going with one man who is a business partner. We are going and then my engine had a problem somewhere and I needed super glue. Something, the power, something came out at the place where the man was. See, God is still. Where we, where we stopped, he said, Do you have super glue? Well, incidentally, the man was, it's like he knew a little about auto mechanics. He said, do you have, Let me fix this. He was telling me what to do. We stood there, he said, Do you have super glue? 
A gentleman came to stand by and said, I, I think I have glue. He, opened, he put his hand in his bag. Where we are, there's no way we can buy glue anywhere. I would have abandoned the car at that place and left. But this boy came from nowhere and pulled super glue out. So he said, I have anywhere like that. But where did you get the glue from? Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes God allows things to happen to us at places where he knows he will make provision for us. Amen. Say amen. amen. You are worried. How am I going to fix my rent? How am I going to take care of this? Trust in God. Tell somebody, believe God. That was what Jesus taught us in Matthew 6. In Matthew 6, he says, Don't worry yourself about what you eat, what you wear. Don't worry. There are things is too much for your head. How would this happen? But seek first the kingdom of God. Say, Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. He said, those are the things that the people of the world, they worry about. I'm talking to somebody here. If you live here, you don't even know what you're going to eat. But believe God. Hallelujah. Amen. If I have food, I will give you one till you can't even eat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe that man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 6. But listen, you know, what, what, what is also important to note, listen, that's, we have become so carnal. I don't know why. It's like we don't, we are placing more value on material things than on the spirit. In Luke chapter 9, man of God, when Jesus called the disciples, the apostles, and was going to send them on a mission for the first time, he told them that, go and preach the kingdom of God into all the cities. He told them that don't take anything along. Don't take money. Don't take shoe. Don't even take two clothes. What was Jesus trying to say? You see, he knew that many of us would be distracted. How can I survive? The economy is hard. Things are difficult. Compared to maybe yet. When you, 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 they are going to put you in the grave, we will see who they will pour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Then, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wanted to read this. He says that God do all the work he does on the grounds of your effort or because you believe and adhere to and you trust on the message that you heard. And for me, that is powerful that it is important that we must hear the word of God because God moves on the wings of his way to work in your life. And can I tell you, the people, those, those who don't like to hear preaching, say, yeah, preaching, and they're saying, I'm saying, Pastor, can be good for your centurion, you be like, I'm fine, you be, be, and you're saying, yeah, you're boring to do. God will not do anything outside his way. Read your Bible. And he went to these places, and he taught them, he said, he preached the gospel of the kingdom before doing the works. The gospel, the way, goes ahead of the works. Say amen. Amen. So, can somebody read the verse 5 in your in, in simple version for me? Verse 5. Don't be distracted, please. Give me some 10 minutes, I'll wrap up. Yes. Verse 6, uh, verse 5. Yes. He therefore that ministers to you the spirit. And worketh miracles among 
and works miracles among you. Does it do it by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Or by the hearing of faith? It means that if you can hear faith, you will see his works in your life. Amen. Verse 6. Abraham believed and trusted in God. Read, continue from verse 7, verse 6 here. Even as our father Abraham believed God, and it was credited for his righteousness. Continue. Know ye therefore that know therefore that they which are of faith. Those who have faith. The same are the children of Abraham. The same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture. And the scripture. For seeing that God just God will just father having true faith. For seeing that God is going to deal with us on the grounds of faith. God will declare us righteous, not because you are a smart Christian, not because you are a very legalistic, righteous Christian, but because you believe in Jesus. Hmm? He preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you, all nations shall be blessed. In that scripture, he was talking about the seed. He says, in your seed shall all nations be blessed. And that seed is Jesus Christ. Yes. Say amen. amen. Because what we are enjoying today, if not for this gospel message, that was preached with clarity, it won't have gotten to us. Others saw it as it was their own, the Jews. But he said, through Jesus Christ, all nations shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. Verse 9. So then, then we I like verse 9 because the verse 9 is the meaning for blessed faith missions. Yeah. The blessed faith mission, no, that is where we got the name from. Verse 9. Galatians chapter 3, verse 9. Yes. Verse 9. So then. So then. Then which be of faith. Those who are people of faith. Everybody say people of faith. They are blessed and made happy and favored by God as partners in fellowship with the believing and trusting Abraham. Those who are of faith, they are blessed with faithful Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that faith of God will be birthed in your heart this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I won't take you beyond that. Just look at verses 13. You know what Jesus has done for you and I. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. That the blessing of Abraham will come on us Gentiles. That we shall receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. I will say by faith. By faith. Say you are all sons of God by faith. You are all children of God by faith. Though if I ask you what makes you think you are a child of God? What makes you think that when you are sitting, say you should bow over for heaven in me. You don't have any evidence except faith. Hallelujah. Amen. GT. And that faith you needed to make it. The faith that I am following the right course. There is God. Even though I can't see him with my eyes. Even though this pastor is preaching and doing all kinds of things. He's talking about somebody we have never seen with our physical eyes. My heart believes it. Amen. Amen. Let's read on from verses 15. Read it, my brother. Yes. Brethren, I speak after the matter of men. No, 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 it's the thing but men confident. Yes, it will confirm. 
Oh. Um. 